When we use agarose gel electrophoresis to separate DNA's fragments by size, the linear strands of DNA are going to travel snake-like through the gel mesh. We even have a cool name for this, bias reptation. The longer strands are going to get tangled up more, so they're going to travel slower, so we can then compare it to like a ladder of known sizes in order to see how long the DNA was. But what if your DNA isn't linear? What if you have the plasma, which is like a circular piece of DNA in which we can stick in um, the instructions for making like a protein we want into this vector backbone to form this plasmid. Um, and then we can stick in a bacteria and they'll make a lot of copies of it. So this is kind of like a snake is biting its tail. And when the snake is biting its tail, it's now a circle and it's going to travel differently through the mesh because it can't slither in the same way it could. So you might expect it to like travel slower. And sometimes this happens, but sometimes it actually travels faster than if it were linear. So let's explain what's going on. It has to do with DNA topology. So you know how like geologists talk about like topology, like mountains, rivers, lakes, or I don't know, all the like the landscape, the 3D, whatever, like the 3D shape of like the landscape. Well, we can talk about like a 3D shape of DNA. So although we often draw just like these strands of nucleotides so, like ATGC, you know? Um, so DNA, it is actually like has a shape. And so DNA likes to be double stranded. And so are um, with those like base pairings that you have A to T and G to C. And that's why you get that like zippered up strands. So basically when you have a plasmid, it's double stranded DNA. So um, if you have this double stranded DNA, and now you have your plasmid in a circle. What's going to happen is that if you were to linearize the DNA, so if you were to cut both strands, make it linear, now it's gonna snake like, like normal and it will um, travel like normal. It'll make sense with your ladder and everything, all's cool. But what if you don't? What if you just have the plasmid DNA? So basically DNA is like humongous. And so in cells, um, it gets quilled, quilled, quilled up. Um, and so in our cells, this is done with like the help of like histones and stuff, but even in bacteria, it gets really coiled up and um, we can talk about super coiling. So basically you can take like rubber bands if, to see for yourself or like a um, telephone cord, but basically if you twist it up, it starts getting super duper, super duper twisted. And this is going to save a lot of space and it makes it really tiny. So now when you run that through the gel, it's going to travel like it was a lot smaller than that whole linear strand of DNA because now it can kind of just like shoot through the holes in the gel. So it's going to travel faster and it's going to look like it was smaller. So it's going to be a lower down band than you would expect in your gel if it were in the linear form. What if, so now there's a third option. So we had the linear, which is like our control. Like that's where, where we would expect it to be based on its length. And then we have the super coiled, which is going to be faster. But so, you know, I said that DNA is super coiled inside of like these cells and stuff. So how is the cell actually going to access what it needs to access? So this DNA has all the instructions for like making the proteins and everything. And so how is the cell going to access it if it's all in the super coiled state? Well, there are enzymes. So like protein reaction helper thingies. Um, they can actually nick one strand, so like to topo isomerases. So they can nick a strand, and this relieves some of the tension. So the super coiled, it, it's great for saving space, but it really, really tenses. It's real, there's a high tension, and so these topo isomerases, they can if nick a strand, the helps relieve some of the tension, and so now you have like a relaxed state. Um, so it's not as super coiled. Um, and this allows things like in cells to like access the area or whatever, but in a, and then ligases, so DNA like stitchers can fix it back up after the things have gotten their access that they need. But when you're trying to run a nicked plasmid through a gel, so a nick, remember, so it's just one strand that's cut. So now you still have this circular thing and, but it's not all super coiled, it's relaxed and it's kind of got this part like flopping off. So now you have this big, weird floppy thing that is going to travel slowly through the gel because it's kind of like you have one snake that's trying to get free from a snake that's coiled to it, that's biting its tail. It's this really weird thing. And so it's going to travel really slow through the gel. So it's going to be higher up than you expect on your agarose page gel. So when you look at the gel, the highest up band should be the, um, will be the relaxed, so the nicked, 
um, because it's going to travel the slowest, then the linear, which is where you would expect it um, based on like the ladder, and then you would have the super coiled, which is going to travel fastest because it's all tightly coiled up and it can kind of just shoot through the gel. The difference between in like spacing between the bands that you would expect, that's going to depend on in part on like how the how meshy your gel, your, um, gel is. So here, it's kind of just like shown as one dimensional, but it's really this 3D mesh. So you can think of it kind of like having a sea of basketball hoop rooms. Um, or, and you're trying, you're kind of like dropping jump ropes through them. So you can think that if you have a long linear jump rope, that's going to get tangled up a lot. If you have a short linear jump rope, it's going to travel pretty fast through. If you have a super coiled um, DNA, it's going to just go like straight through the hoops, right? It's not going to get tangled up. And, um, or at least not much. And then if you have a niche, it's going to get like tangled and stuck and all sorts of weird stuff. So it's going to travel slowly. Um, so we can influence how meshy this gel is in order to kind of tell apart differences, different sizes differences. And so typically we're not doing this just to like tell apart nicked versus linear versus super coiled, but we're doing it um, because we're trying to isolate like linear fragments of different sizes. And so if you have a different res like size mesh, um, you can resolve different size fragments. So basically tell apart different size things. So if you're trying to separate really big things, you're going to want a bigger mesh so that everything doesn't just get like stuck. Um, and if you are trying to separate really small things, you're going to want a tighter mesh so that there's more things for the little guys to get um, stuck on. And so we can manipulate the size of this mesh um, by using um, a higher percentage of agarose, so the sugar that we're making this gel from, um, if we want to separate really tiny things, and a lower concentration of agarose if we want to separate really big things. But in any case, the agarose gel is just like the, the separating thing. Um, like the way that we're going to separate things. And it's really like boring. It's like why we use it is because it's super boring. Um, and so the DNA is just going to like go through it, but it can't, it can only go through it in these like tunnel kind of things through the gel because, um, and so you get this like slithery motion. Um, so you can describe it as these kind of like snake like, um, snake like paths that the DNA can take. So it can kind of like wiggle and move through and then we call it reptation. Um, and the bias reptation part comes because like the head of the DNA, so like the head of the snake, the leading end is going to kind of like expand and like travel faster towards the end or whatever. I'm not a physicist. I was just trying to figure out um, for myself, but I, cause I really like using the word by this reputation. Um, and I think it's a really cool word, but anyway, you don't need to know that you just, um, you should know that the size of you'll get different size, um, bands that kind of like when you have like a car in the rear view mirror window or whatever, it says like caution objects may be closer than they appear. Well, in the agarose gel electrophoresis, we can have like caution, plasmid DNA may be bigger than they appear or smaller than they appear. It all depends on the topology um, of the DNA. Um, and so we can call these different topological forms topoisomer, topoisomers. Um, and so isomer is where you have like the same thing, but in like a different form type of thing. Um, and so we talked about different types of isomers when we're talking about like chemistry and stuff, but um, Topo isomers are just, they're different in like their 3D um, space arrangement of the DNA.